Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode here of the Calamity Let's Play. A huge thank you as always for all of your lovely support throughout the series, my friends. I very much do appreciate it. Now, if we can keep it up with all of the beautiful support in the form of the likes and the subscriptions and various other bits and bobs, that would be beautiful. It would really help out myself, the channel, and the video hugely. If you do want to go one further with your support, though, you guys could go ahead and use code Python when ordering any sneak energy drinks or to get a discount when ordering any of my Apex gaming pieces. Sees. So then, a few things to be done in today's episode, my friends. I'd very much like to try and get myself the Master Mode exclusive drop for the Eye of Cthulhu so we can finish off this display area here. We do also have the Sunken Seas. We've got the Tier 1 Acid Rain event to go ahead and give a go. So we'll hopefully be doing that in today's episode as well. Uh, but yeah, aside from that, everything is looking good. Since the last episode, I've actually done a little bit of reforging in that uh, we now have a 57 melee damage enchanted sword with deadly on it. We have a demonic artery now. Unfortunately, I got the short end of the straw with the mini shark though. Minus speed and no additional damage. You hate to see it, my friends. You just hate to see it. So, obviously, the last time we took down the Eye of Cthulhu, it was a free spawn. So, what that means is we need to go ahead and make ourselves the actual summoner. And, uh, yeah, then we'll have infinite respawns and attempts at the Eye of Cthulhu. So, let's get ourselves down one of these here chasms. Ideally, the one that's actually got a uh, demon altar in it. And then, uh, yeah, we should be good to go. What the hell is that? A neurofly. Huh. I've never seen that before. So there it is, my friends. The suspicious looking eye not consumable. All we need to do is get ourselves over here. And do you know what? I'm actually feeling pretty ballsy right now. I think we might be able to do this without buffs. Okay. Ooh, we do have a sandstorm event going on though. So, uh... Should probably be careful. Nevertheless, the time has come to go ahead and uh, put it to night time and to go ahead and actually give this a bit of a go. So here we have it, my friends, the Eye of Cthulhu. We're going to go ahead and just absolutely freaking wreck this guy, only doing about nine damage to me. <laughs> You're a bit of an embarrassment there, sir. Well, as much as we may not have as much of a damage output as per our old original mini shark, we're still not looking too bad, I would say, my friends. Yeah. All right. Come on. Let's just get this thing done, shall we? Come on. I did it before. Like, pretty easily, in fact. And there we have it. We done did it. Right. Did we get it? No, we didn't. I'll still go ahead and open up the baggie here, though. We've got 25 gold coins. And we could probably use that immediately to go ahead and see if we can get ourselves a better reforge on this bad boy. Um, intimidating? Weak? Yeah. Yeah. That. That's more like it. <laughs> there we have it! And my friends! That time, we got it. Right, well, that's that little goal for the episode, Dunzo. I think it's time to move on to the Sulfurous Seas. There it is, the suspicious grinning eyes. So let's go ahead and zoom in, and let's put that in its little display item frame. There we have it, my friends. The display area for the Isle of Cthulhu is done. We are at a 100% success rate with all of the boss display areas so far. Very cool. Something else I've done since the last episode is go through certain folks' shops. And I've actually realized that there are two pillars being sold by this guy here. We have the Desert Pylon, which is one we don't have just yet. And also, would you believe, an Oasis Pylon from the Extra Pylons mod. Two different unique pylons that we don't have in this world yet. Very, very cool. Now, here's the question. Do we reckon we could use either of these over at the Sunken Sea? Do we even have a desert near it? Yes, we do. Okay. Needless to say, we actually need to, you know, get over there in order to plop these houses down. Uh, so, yeah, this might take a little bit. It may not. I don't know. We are kind of running against the clock, though, here. Maybe what I should have done is go back to base and actually picked up some of my NPCs, you know, with a bug net like we can do. And then we could have simply relocated them to the eventual desert base, right? Oh, well, whatever happens, happens, my friends. We'll get this thing done in one way or another. Alrighty, so here we are. We've got ourselves the Insta houses here. Let's go ahead and start placing... They match the biome? 
Oh, dude, that's cool. Oh, that's really cool, actually. <laughs> I had no idea that would actually match the biome. And look at that, actually perfectly placed as well. All right. Uh, right, so we've got the alchemist amongst various other dudes that we could be going ahead and uh, relocating over here. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the lumberjack and the zoologist over here, okay? So there's the house for the lumberjack and then the zoologist. There you have it. Right, it may take a little bit for them to actually come over, though, is the thing. Ah, jeez. All right, for now, though, we could go ahead and place in the desert pylon. Rather like that. And then, uh, yeah. Oh, interestingly, I don't actually need NPCs over there to actually have the desert thing work. All right. I mean, I'm certainly not going to complain about it, am I? No, no, no. All right. So here we are, my friends, over at the Sulfurous Seas. The Alchemist has arrived. Oh, snap, dude. The Alchemist. Cool. We can start buying potions flat out, dude. Oh, listen to that music, though, folks. I love the Sulfurous Sea background music. I think I honestly think it's one of the best soundtracks I've heard in Calamity so far. Obviously, I haven't gotten that far in Calamity, not even on my previous series. So, I don't know, man. There could be some better tracks out there. Hey, and what do you know? The Brewer is also here. Perks have taken down the Eye of Cthulhu right there, my friends. The Alchemist NPC mod NPCs. Fantastic. I mean, to be honest with you guys, all we have to do is just sort of wait around. The Sulfuric Acid Rain event actually was happening fairly often. Uh, so, I don't imagine we've got a long time to wait. I really don't. So, let's just go ahead and chill for a bit. Ha <laughs> <laughs> cool! Guys, check it out. A diving helmet. Didn't even know that they could drop on those little uh, thresher dudes, but uh, they are. Uh, what could this make in this mod? Oh, still just the diving gear, huh? And the diving gear can be made into jellyfish diving gear, which can be made into arctic diving gear, which can be made into abyssal diving gear. And then it can be made into the abyssal diving suit. Good grief, that's a big tooltip. <laughs> Look at that, man. That's going to take me centuries to read through that. I swear to God, it's always when you are actually looking for something in Terraria that it just doesn't happen. I say it all the time, but it really is the case. I have been in for so long now that I've actually started on uh, smoothing the world here. You may recall there being a little bit of a floating platform here. I got rid of it. And, yeah, now we have a nice, uh, silky smooth sulfurous sea. That's a lot of S's. I wonder, if I was to head back to base, right? Uh, I'm wondering if the event guy sells the caustic tear. Ah, no. The caustic tear, of course, is the item you use to sort of manually summon in the acid rain event. But, um... No. Hell yeah. Oh, look at all these beautiful potions, folks. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Shops changer. Calamity. Oh, man. Yeah. This gal is going to be integral to this series. And then, of course, we do have ourselves the alchemist here who is selling a bunch of different herbs here, which is beautiful. We also have ourselves uh, luck potions, interestingly. Uh, wait. Who was the guy who used to sell arena sort of buff stations and whatnot? I don't know. I can't remember if I'm being honest with you. But I'll tell you what, we're going to use this time to be productive, okay? And that means going ahead and buying ourselves some gravitation potions, okay? And we are going to take to the skies because I would like to get fledgling wings. In fact, real quick, can you make the fledgling wings? Uh, looks like you can. A zero crate or a sky crate? Huh. I mean, I guess we could do it that way, but I, I kind of want to take to the skies. All right, good to know. We've got ourselves a sky lake here, so if we need to do a little bit of sky lake fishing for a quest or damselfish or whatever the devil it is you catch in the sky, we can. Pretty handy dandy. All right, how about it, my friends? Another sky island. Fledgling wings, yes? Yeah. All right, very, very cool. Our first pair of pre-hard mode wings. 
You'd love to see it. Absolutely love to see it. <laughs> well, my friends, it's been such a long time that I've had a shirt change, I've had a cup of tea, and I've been distracting myself by taking out the Eye of Cthulhu for no apparent reason. Uh, but yeah, check this out, my friends. I figured I'd bring you guys back just to say that we've got a death stare rod now. That's pretty cool, and definitely pretty much a direct upgrade to the Sun Spirit staff here. So that is most certainly going to be going on our person. Uh, what would be a nice idea, though, is if we were to go ahead and get ourselves a decent reforge with it. So, we are looking for anything decent. Yep, that will probably do the job. There we have it. We have the Death Stare eyeball on us. Ha <laughs> ha! Do you know what? Sod it. Technically, the Blood Moon is next. And I know for a fact that in Death Mode, the Blood Moon is a little bit different. And a little bit more insane, shall we say. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and just do it. We're going to do the Portable Sundial. And we're going to activate this thing. The Blood Moon is rising. Come on then, fellas. 11 enemies nearby. <laughs> What an embarrassment these folks are. Oh, hang on a minute. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's a Nidreon. Hey, how's it going, fella? <laughs> 27 enemies nearby. 28. I think the only reason it's not way higher than that is because we have NPCs nearby. Although, with that said, there does appear now to be quite a lot of dudes here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, this is doing the job real nicely, huh? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Let's see what we can grind out of all of these fellas, eh? Go on, Terraria. Give us a bunch of epicness, eh? Look at this, guys. Oh, wait. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I was almost able to just sit there and take it. Um, but yeah, no, the, uh, the, the dudes started to get a little bit annoyed at me, I think. For a while there, I was able to just sort of sit on the floor and just tank everything. <laughs> Interestingly, no sign of a money trough just yet. I'm genuinely surprised. I was expecting that to be like one of the first drops I get. But no, it doesn't seem to be, does it? And there we go. My life is finally over. Ah, good thing. Oh, good grief. No, no. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, we need to, like, get out of it, like, pretty soon-like. There we are. All right. How about an Amidia Spark? I think that'd be a nice little accessory to have, right? Well, one good thing out of all of this is we're going to get ourselves an absolute butt-ton of banners. And that is going to make this event way the heck easier. In fact, uh, ah, I don't really have a place to be putting these banners at the minute. Ah, dang. I really wanted to put them down, my friends. Yeah, this isn't working all too well. But we can now place that down. <laughs> we could put a demon eye banner down. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Feeling good. Kicking butt, taking names. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just saw an Amidia Spark drop. Oh, yeah. See, the issue we have now is we are absolutely inundated with the bloody, bloody tier summoners. And, uh, well, that's rather interfering with my ability to pick stuff up. Well, oh, well, I think that's a bit of a first world problem right there, my friend. Days for now, we are just absolutely a wrecking shop. Literally just wrecking shop. 27 gold coins. We can definitely, probably, boost this even further with the usage of a Zerg potion. And maybe the battle cry from the Fargo's one. You know, there's lots of things we could be doing to make this event just a little bit more interesting, but uh, needless to say, we're not doing it now because we're just going to wipe dying thousands of times over. <laughs> well, there we are, my friends. 50 gold coins, and we're still going strong. <laughs> Literally, the little regenerative parts that these guys are dropping are healing me faster than these guys are hurting me. So then, there it is, my friends. Imidius' spark. Let's go ahead and see if we can get a little bit of warding or armored. Armored is actually kind of all right. I'll go ahead and take that, and we're going to put that in place of the mana jelly. Yeah, having an offensive and defensive accessory at the same time with the Imidius spark, I think, 
is more worthwhile than the mana jelly, if I'm being honest. So, according to the Calamity Wiki, apparently, there's a 1 in 6,000 chance every second for the Acid Rain event to just randomly begin. So it's not begun at the start of the day, it's not begun at the start of nighttime. it can literally happen at any time. Every second is a 1 in 6,000 chance, according to the wiki. I don't know if that's actually true or not, but yeah, that's kind of crazy if you ask me. Now, if we could just have it, you know, happen, that'd be great. Oh, anyway, my friends, it has been such a long time again that I'm actually beginning a new day of recording for this episode, my friends. And I've actually been a bit of a busy bee. You may notice we now have a fishing lake here in the center forest biome. So that's a pretty good idea. Figured I should go ahead and uh, get that done. I just went ahead and did the old uh, bucket of water trick to go ahead and fill in this area, which is great. I also decided to go ahead and put our oasis pylon inside of our our pyramid base and apparently it works. Additionally, I've also managed to go ahead and fix a couple of the NPC houses. This one up here for whatever reason was not valid. So for whatever reason, me getting rid of a banner and relocating the chair over to the right hand side of the table as opposed to the left made it so that this is now valid and this is the guy who has the arena shop that I was talking about before. So yeah, as time goes on and we go ahead and take our bosses, yeah, we are going to have more and more arena stuff for sale. Heart lanterns and ammo boxes and various other bits and bobs that are all going to be very, very useful. In the meantime, we've got a couple of gems. I mean, this is the jeweler NPC at the end of the day, so that makes sense. We also have the Tinkerer. Now, this guy is very, very cool because he sells a bunch of accessories, my friends. And the things that I am looking for more than anything are these. Look at the amount of stuff we have here, my friends. I could quite easily go ahead and uh, make myself, what, the lightning boots? Maybe even the frost bark boots? We can make ourselves horseshoe balloons as well. All of this stuff is going to help our playthrough out quite nicely. So do you know what? That's exactly what we're going to go ahead and do. We've got plenty of money on us, and I feel like some accessory upgrades are in order. So it turns out we actually already have a horseshoe. There is the cloud in a bottle, so we just need to purchase a balloon and we can have ourselves a horseshoe balloon. Turns out we don't actually have a tinker table. Not as far as I can remember anyway. So uh, yeah, there we have it. Now we do. So there we are. Cloud and a balloon and the blue horseshoe balloon. Very, very cool. Now, needless to say, uh, going ahead and uh, getting either warding or menacing on this thing would be very, very nice. But I do kind of want to go ahead and see what this can be made into. Ah. The green horseshoe balloon. That's it, apparently. Oh, right. It's the cloud and the balloon. It's because we've got the horseshoe on it that disables the ability to make the freaking bundle of balloons. Okay. Noted. So check it out, my friends. We probably could go ahead and make ourselves the bundle of balloons here. We've got the sandstorm in a bottle. Uh, alchemy table. Ah, we don't have that. Anvil desert feathers. We could probably make a sandstorm in a bottle in that fashion. Uh, alternatively... Oh, really? Pharaoh's outfit can be made into it. Uh, Blizzard bottle? Okay, this is looking kind of alright, actually. Turns out we actually do have the Pharaoh's outfit, though. So, uh, let me just quickly remind myself. Tinkerer's Workshop, 10 gold coins. That's actually not too bad. There we have it. Sandstorm in a, a bottle. Very cool. All right. 50 bits of snow coming right up. Although with that said, why am I doing this when I have an architect NPC and I can simply buy this stuff? Um, yeah, I've been a bit of a doofus here, haven't I? <laughs> Either way, my friends, we do have ourselves the blizzard in a bottle, and I am pretty sure that that is it. We now have the ability to make the bundle of balloons. There's the sandstorm in a bottle, blizzard in a balloon, and the cloud in a balloon. Wait, did I say sandstorm in a bottle? I meant sandstorm in a balloon. There we have it, my friends. Right, uh, oh, we can't still make it. Okay, for what reason? What else do we need? Aerialite bars. Oh, like that is it, Terraria? This has definitely been nerfed. That was definitely not in the recipe for the bundle of balloons previously. Aha! Ah, it's stopping us from getting too far ahead of ourselves, eh? Armored! Sure, that'll do, my friends. That will definitely do. We have massively increased uh, jump height, as you just saw there. Aha! 
<laughs> yeah, very cool. All right, got a couple of things we can make here. We can make ourselves the tiger climbing gear. We could also make ourselves the spectre boots. And then the only thing that's stopping me from making the lightning boots is the fact that we don't have an anklet of the wind. There's an aglet. Ice skates right there. Yeah, okay. Very, very cool. Blimey, that's expensive. 64 gold coins. Woohoo! Turns out we can make an anklet of the wind. Clouds, pink gel, and jungle spores. I wonder if we could go get the jungle spores real quick, like. The jungle, of course, being over to our left-hand side here. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, man. I'm not looking forward to this, my friends. But the outcome of this, getting ourselves frost spark boots, could be pretty darn major. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are indeed going to pop into the jungle, attempt to go to the underground jungle in search of 50 jungle spores. Now, alternatively, of course, we could always get lucky and find ourselves the anklet of the wind flat out in a chest. You just never know. So pretty much the deeper we go, the higher... Oh, hey! Yeah, very cool, Terraria. Very cool. The deeper we go, the more chance we're going to have of finding jungle spores. In fact, I think I just saw a little bit of a glowy thing down there. Ha-ha! Our first jungle spores. Oh, the chances are looking good, my friends. We do have ourselves a jungle chest here. And I'm pretty sure that these mahogany chests have the same loot table as the shrine chests. In other words, we should have ourselves a chance at getting ourselves the ankle of the wind out of this bad boy. Come on. Fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed. Anchor of the wind. Oh! No. No sign of it. Flower boots. That's actually not too bad. Oh, okay. Uh, another bone pickaxe apparently waiting down there. There must have been an undead miner and my death stare rod just absolutely ruined him. <laughs> no way. A bizarre pre-queen bee. That's pretty big. <laughs> wow, all right. That's going to come in useful against Queen Bee. Very, very nicely, I say. Very, very nicely. And would you look at that? There's a heart statue. This is turning out to be a very, very fruitful endeavor. I'll tell you what. This is great. All right, not only do we have the last two loads of spores in sight, there does also appear to be an underground house for us to explore. So, yeah, guys. Looking very... Oh, we only got two? Ah, oh, I thought you always got three from the little spore thingies. All right, well, there's one up there, and there was one down below. I did notice it. Don't worry. Uh, all right, Hermes boots, Titan potions. Wow. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there we are, the final load of spores that we need. Okay, so we now have enough to make ourselves the anklet of the wind, yes? Uh, there it is. <laughs> oh, snappers. Oh, my word. Our accessory supply is about to go absolutely berserk. Starting off with the tiger climbing gear. Very, very good. We have a spectre boots. We have lightning boots. We have frostbark boots. And they're warding? Wow. That's incredible. <laughs> As much as the 10 defense at this early stage in the game is very, very nice, I would like to be able to move nice and quick, my friends. Now, obviously, because we have the Frostbark boots, that is going to help us massively, but the little giant shell here is going to hinder that a little bit. So I am actually going to take that off in favor of my now warding Tiger Climbing Gear. So, yeah, we haven't lost too much defense. Look at that. We still got 41 for crying out loud. But, yeah, now we have ourselves some uh, decent tier accessories here my friends. Very, very good indeed. Our movement speed should be very, very nice now, my friendos. If I already, it's feeling good. Good with a capital good. So then, my friends, on that epic note, it is time to wrap up the episode. I was wanting to do the Acid Rain event today, but uh, Terraria and Calamity said otherwise. So, um, yeah, that's just how it is sometimes. Elijah Smith says you can get a massive amount of money from selling the coral seashells and other sea things that the Desert Scourge drops from his loot bag. Let's go ahead and uh, put that to the test, actually. Uh, seashell. Okay, uh, seashell? Uh, oh, I might have already made it all into other stuff. Uh, what about coral? Okay, there's a little bit of coral apparently inside of this chest here. Uh, what can it be sold for? 18 silver. 
That doesn't seem overly high. Maybe it's some of the other materials that the Desert Scourge drops that we need to be going ahead and selling. I don't know. I need to go ahead and, you know, take the Desert Scourge down to really put that to the test. But I appreciate the tip there, buddy. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode, please do be sure, of course, to drop a like rating if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for all your support, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye!